Hi there. I'm going to uh, show you how to take a, the AC motor that's in your, uh, say, your old-fashioned wood lathe with the with the stepped pulleys. I'm going to I'm going to show you how to take that out. I'm not going to show you actually. I'm going to give you some pointers on which way to go with it. But what you need to do is you need to get one of these. It's variable variable speed uh, positive permanent magnet. Uh, DC electric motor, and um, I don't know if you see this or not, but it is uh, it's a two and a half horsepower. Where that one right there is only a one horsepower. It has um, it's a treadmill heavy duty 6700 RPM electric motor rated at uh, 130 volts at DC current. Uh, it takes 18 amps to run that, but it's uh, probably half the weight of this big monster right beside it. And um, takes up a whole bunch less space, and uh, actually is quite more cost-effective, I believe, to run. But uh, I'm going to show you where to, uh, where to come up with one of these DC motors. That's such a discount rate you just can't even imagine. It's, of course, they're used, but I mean, can you imagine variable speed from say 100 RPMs to 6,700 RPMs on your on your antique wood lathe, which, like I have here, I have an old Homecraft Delson. Milwaukee uh, lathe that I've uh, converted from the step pulley system to a DC electric motor. First, what you have to do is you have to go to your thrift store and let them know that you'll take away all the bulky items that they have, such as these items right here, a treadmill. Well, I've, I've taken several away from the um, local thrift store. I live in the mountains and they're kind of few and far between, but it seems like every one I've gotten my hands on, which I believe is four now or five, have been either had the cords cut off and the control panel smashed all the pieces. Um, they've been had wires cut out from underneath of them. Anyway, I've managed to uh, take five of them and uh, come up with one that actually works. This isn't it, but this would be my sixth. So there'll be one more here that I can either put this motor on a uh, drill press or something of that sort. But I'll flip it over and show you what, what you're up against. Of course, the more simplistic um, treadmill, the better. But you want to make sure that it does have the the DC motor, which is uh, quite small, it looks like a starter for a car, and it has this uh, counterweight uh, pulley on it. That's what you want. Now, they do have some that are half horsepower um, treadmill motors with a, a, a spring loaded kind of a, like a snowmobile clutch. You don't want those. Those are just an AC electric motor with a fancy little thing on it to make it go faster or slower. And they're really inefficient in there. They're just a big handful of trouble. What you need to do is very carefully, after you plug it in, make sure it works in all ranges of speed. Take it over, turn it over, uh, carefully remove these covers. These are kind of useful later on. And um, take the wiring and everything and all the mounts and brackets and everything completely apart. Now, you, there might be a, a need for disconnecting the wiring to pull it down through the main tube or from say from a um, an incline, a power incline. So you want to uh, label these because they're not all the same color and they're not all the same kind of connectors and they do go to safety switches and overload switches but you need every one of them, all of them. And here's the uh, little uh, circuit panel or, or control module and it has a coil down here, I believe it's a coil and then, um, of course the motor and I adapted this pulley because it fit really nice with my one inch shaft which is a small modification, a little bit of work in I slipped it over the top with the reverse nut with a washer on it and, and voila I have my pulley on the machine although I kind of regret leaving the step pulley system on there but that's what I had to work with so that's what I've got but you know, need to make sure that all this equipment on top is all here the safety switch um, I guess you don't need the, the wafer or the biscuit so much, but you will need uh, to wire those two together to complete the circuit because that's what this does, or it either breaks the circuit one or the other. So you need to make sure that that's in, in play. Now, unless you have a uh, adequately um, uh, may, uh, put together bridge rectifier that can handle the uh, amperage of 18 amps and whatnot, you'll, um, you'll need to make sure that the, the um, power uh, speed setting is all installed and everything works even at the higher speed and when you pull this out that it kills the uh, motor that's what I did the first one I had uh, I couldn't stop the motor once it got started and it wouldn't shut down it just kept going faster and faster 
and it shouldn't it should be like this one when you turn it on all the way it should go nowhere so I was doing the opposite anyway you want to disassemble this whole panel I took and cut the whole panel out and just saved it and it took sections of it out that I needed of course all, you, all the wiring in there you won't need I mean I could I guess you could I could recommend to unplug one piece at a time because there's a battery pack right up in here that runs these monkey gauges over here which you won't need any of those unless you want to test your pulse while you're uh, spinning a really fragile piece of wood but um you can uh, unplug one wire at a time with it plugged in to make sure that it still works until you find those wires that uh, you can disconnect and go ahead and take them completely out of the loom and shorten up the ones that uh, that you need. I didn't do that. I just uh, wadded them all up in a nice tight wad and threw a couple of uh, zip ties around it and, and tacked it up underneath the surface of the uh, the bed of the uh, lathe. Like I said, I keep the plastic because with a little bit of persuasion with the torch, you can you can bend it any in any proportion you want. You can make it do pretty much whatever you want. And I wrapped mine all the way around the backside and. Had just a little bit of a cover here, keep me from stumbling into the belt and, and pulley system when I get really going on a piece of wood. But yeah, I mean, it keeps all the dust out of there, out of the motor, and allows a um, kind of a, just for a little bit of safety. And it doesn't look so ugly. But that's all I got. I went $27, I think, for the, uh, the V drive belt, and I just measured the length after I had everything set in there, plumb and, and square. I took the uh, cross bracket off of the of the lathe, I mean of the uh, treadmill that goes across the front of the motor bolts too because it already has its bracket on there. Just take a hacks and cut each side after you get everything disconnected and that piece there can uh, serve as your your mount. Mount it anywhere you want. I mean I've seen, seen guys mount it right up there by the headstock. I'd just as soon have it out of the way. If it's going to have a pulley on it, it might as well be down out of the way. We don't have to listen to it and, and have it in the way. Anyway, that's how you do it to uh, make your uh, old-fashioned step pulley lathe system uh, fully uh, adjustable from 100 to 6700 RPM. I guess if you have a, uh, a different um, pulley configuration, you could go much faster. I don't think you really want to, though. I, uh, I spin, I spin uh, manzanita and uh, maple, some uh, ceanothus, and all kinds of different uh, real hardwoods. So it's nice to creep along at two or three hundred RPM, and it's just as uh, simple as this. You know, you just reach down and hit the old the old speed control. And if you notice, I have my little red tab piece still stuck in there. You know, you can get them going so fast as you want for polishing or finishing, or sanding. The only thing is, is there's no quick reverse to the to the lathe. You'll have to um, install a switch, which would reverse the um, direction of the current underneath uh, to the two power wires that go to the motor. I do believe they're blue wires on this particular type of motor. But uh, everything's there that you possibly could use to make a variable speed. Get rid of this monster that you got. Take that to somebody that can use it on a table saw or, or as a boat anchor or something. Get yourself one of those little devils. Uh, they're priceless. Uh, they're about $300 new. So that's, uh, that's what I come up with. And it works quite well for me. And I'm happy to... Uh, Pass it on. All right. If you have any questions, uh, you can get a hold of me through my profile, and maybe I can help you out. All right. Have a good day.